presentation is learning to become a master presenter and having the unfair advantage. And uh, we're also going to be reviewing our brand, our brand new uh, 360 presentation uh, that has recently been introduced. So, guys, I'm excited to uh, to be on the call here tonight. You know, it's one of those things that. Um, when it comes to this business, guys, you know, I learned uh, along, you know, from my mentors and such that, you know, there's going to manage in this business. <laughs> and I can tell you that you definitely, without a doubt, guys, you want to make sure that that advantage resides on, you know, your side of the uh, uh, of the table, if you will, when it comes to, you know, getting out there and sharing this opportunity and, and going out and, uh, and getting face to face. Now, obviously... Uh, our, our format is really going to revolve more around your one-on-one -on -one, uh, as opposed to revolving around, you know, your bigger group meetings. We do uh, trainings on that as well, learning how to become a master speaker. Uh, tonight is not uh, not quite as much on that, guys. We're going to kind of focus more on your one-on-ones, your two-on-ones, your, your three-on-ones, et cetera. Uh, but, uh, but I think you'll find that uh, this is going to be helpful for you. And here's the reason why, guys. In the network marketing business, you got to know your numbers, right? You got to know where your volume comes from, where will your enrollments come from, where the people are going to come from, etc. And, uh, and according to the day, the Direct Sales Association, we know that 77 percent all enrollments in the net industry are made face to face. Now, of course, some of those come from the bigger meetings. Many of them come from the happy hours, executive lunches, but a lot of them also come from face to face. Okay, so we love our conference calls, guys. We love our webinars. We love the internet. We love all that. We love our sizzle messages. All of those things are fantastic, guys. But at the end of the day, three quarters of the sales made in this industry happen uh, from face to face presentations. And guys, that's really where you want to be. Uh, is learning again to become that master presenter and learning how to make sure that the advantage, okay, because uh, there will be advantage to someone. And, ladies and gentlemen, you want to make sure that that advantage uh, is uh, is to you, okay, so that you can have your absolute best shot at being able to uh, to bring that prospect into your business. So, guys, take some great notes today. This is going to be a training you'll be able to, uh, you know, frankly, guys, you'll be able to use it for quite some time, and it's going to be some notes you'll want to, you know, kind of return back to, if you will, uh, I would encourage you to take your notes tonight two different ways. The first way that I would take them is I would take them as a student. In other words, I would take them as looking at this thing and saying, okay, how can I learn uh, from this information here? And the second way that I would encourage you uh, to look at the information tonight is that as of a teacher. Uh, because obviously, guys, you're going to want to learn the information and you're going to want to teach the information down into your organization and down into your team, guys. So with that being said, let's get started here tonight. Uh, guys, the... Uh, you know, obviously, every presentation is going to first begin with uh, setting of the appointment. And, you know, setting of an, uh, an appointment is something that sometimes some people struggle with. You know, I did when I first got started, you know, in the industry. Oh, my gosh, man, I was I was so scared. I was scared of my own shadow, man. I was afraid to pick the phone up, and I was afraid to, I was afraid to call anyone. I was just, uh, you know, man, I was excited, you know what I mean? But it was just tons of nervous energy and nervous excitement. That, Guys, in your trainer, we do, uh, I'm sorry, in your, uh, in your planner, we actually have quite a bit of information uh, loaded up there for you in your planner about the invitation process. We've got some great scripts that are available for you uh, that you might want to, you know, consider checking out. What I want to do tonight is not go through a full uh, total, you know, training on how to invite, but I do want to do some of the information for you, uh, you know, on, you know, really uh, some key points on the invitation process and really focus most of our time on presenting. The thing that I just want to say to you guys, you know, there's there's basically three different ways to invite. You have your product invitation, okay? You have your opportunity presentation, and then you have really uh, kind of a uh, what I call your A-player script. In other words, you know, the type of script that you want to use when you're dealing with a very serious uh, A-player, okay, who's looking at your business. The thing that I want you to say when it comes to the invitation and what you really understand is that the most important thing is that you get the appointment and get off the phone. Remember this, guys. The reason that you sample, the reason you invite, okay, uh, and contact get that person to a meeting. You're looking at them to an appointment. Uh, you're not necessarily trying to you know, get them to sign up. I watch people oftentimes, they get on the phone and they call their prospects and, and they want to go into so much information and they want to get into so much detail uh, with their prospects. And part of the reason is because they feel like that, you know, they need to, you know, kind of maybe get that person signed up or get them enrolled. And, and guys, here's the thing. I mean, when you do the invitation, you've got to have a goal. 
And so you're doing your embodying, your attitude needs to be that my target, my goal, you know, my purpose, if you will, is to basically get the appointment. So the great thing about that is if you'll get the appointment, then you can turn right around and you can get off on very quickly. Uh, you know, and that obviously is, is the main purpose and the main goal. So when I'm contacting the embodying guys, I like to keep it short. I like to keep it sweet. I like to keep it to the point. I like to remember that my purpose is to obviously get them to the presentation. I'm not trying to sign them up, so to speak, right? I'm simply trying to pique their interest, get them to the presentation so I can give them the full story. There's an old saying that until you can say everything, don't say anything. And that's a pretty good one right there. Until you can say everything, don't say anything. The other thing I just want to offer when it comes to the invitation process and getting your appointments uh, you know, to be that master presenter app, guys, is just remember your mission. Your mission in the prospecting process is not to enroll or sign up guests. The person has to decide whether or not they want to sign up for themselves. Your mission is to simply collect a decision from that guest, okay? Guys, we know this. We know about 20% of the app population is open to an opportunity, looking for something different in their life. Uh, could, could be a product they're looking for. could be the opportunity they're looking for. The point is that not everybody's looking, guys, and so don't expect everybody to look, okay? But remember, your mission is to simply collect a decision. If you collect the decision, even if it's a no, you have still been successful. And that's something important that I want you guys to remember uh, as we move forward here into creating the unfair advantage and becoming a master presenter, okay? So, guys, refer to your planner, page 10, 11, and 12. Really get into your invitation scripts and really get into some tips excellent for you, uh, really giving the four points of a proper invitation. I don't want to get into that tonight. It's just not the purpose of the training. What I want to focus on is really learning how to be that master presenter and how to create the unfair advantage. Guys, I want to show you how to make the advantage so much in your favor that the prospect is about 90% in the company uh, before you ever finish the presentation, okay? About 50% in the business but when you first uh, even sit down to start the presentation, okay? So a couple things here when it comes to, uh, to uh, you know, setting up your meeting. One big tip that I'll give you guys, uh, again, we said it there, get, get the appointment, get off the phone. You know, or it could be pass out the sample, get the appointment, and get out of there. The point is when you're out for the meeting, just get the meeting scheduled and move on. You can always come back and fill the rest in later. If you can't say everything, don't say anything. Point number two, always get the spouse to the appointment if there's any way possible and or significant other, okay? The reality is, guys, is that if you don't have their spouse there, for those the prospects that that applies to, it doesn't mean that, that you can't enroll them uh, without the spouse in attendance, guys, but I can tell you it makes a huge difference, not only whether or not you can enroll them, but it also makes a huge difference in what they'll do uh, after they enroll. You know, there's another old saying, you'll find I'm full of them, <laughs> but one of the old sayings that a uh, mentor taught me years ago is, that people tend to be down on the things that they're not on. And when the spouse is not up on 360 chocolate and the husband or wife comes home all excited, oh, my gosh, honey, we're going to get wealthy in the chocolate business, and, and oh, I just spent 1300 bucks, and we're having a happy hour with all our friends nights from now, uh, you know, you, some they find the other spouse not quite as confident as the first one, right? And so uh, just know, guys, that's important. People are down on what they're not up on. Uh, you definitely want to get the spouse plugged in as much as you uh, as much as you can there. Now, uh, let's uh, let's talk about this, guys. When it comes to the actual appointment uh, itself, I will tell you that you know a lot of people want to just do one only, and if they have a prospect, they only want that one prospect to be there. Let me just say this to you, folks. You always want to get more than one prospect to the meeting if there's any way possible, okay? Uh, if I can show the plan to two, three, four people at a time, I'll do it any day of the week at the same presentation because my experience in 18 years has taught me that there's not a whole lot of advantage, you know, to try to, to get somebody one on Oftentimes, people will want that. But mostly, by the way, it's the sponsor who usually wants the one-on-one -on -one uh, the most because they think that uh, that's going to make a huge difference. Uh, oftentimes, the prospect, you know, will even, well, they just want to meet you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and I'm not saying that I won't meet one-on-one. -on -one. I certainly will. But, guys, I'm a big believer in creating arbitrage, create leverage, right? Arbitrage is, is taking two and creating three, from, right? Uh, and, and I just, you know, guys, if you're going to invest that same hour, why not have two or three or four people that you're showing the plan to versus just, you know, just one person? 
And so do your best to try to get multiple prospects there uh, at one time if you can. It's simple and easy. You know, it's maybe just a bigger table. You can still use a regular 8.5 by 11 presentation book. You can still play a video on a small screen for three, four, five people uh, just as easily as you can for one. As a matter of fact, my experience is, is I've presented in a one-on-one -on -one type uh, way to you know as many as 12 to 15 people. Uh, I've done that many times, okay, but it had the same style as a one-on-one -on -one with a presentation book, not, you know, a screen behind me and things along those lines, okay, seated at the table. All right, let's talk about where your presentations are held, okay. First and foremost, guys, here's the thing. As a leader in this business, you can't operate off the cuff, okay. You can't, uh, you can't be a rookie. You want to be able to be successful, and you want to be able to create the types of incomes that you know are possible here with 360 Chocolate. So a couple of things you need to have here, guys. You need to have your locations. Now, you need to have your locations in two different ways. The first is you need to have your locations for different times of the day. Okay? And then secondly, you have your locations for different parts of town. Let me explain what I mean by that. I live in the Dallas area. Dallas is a pretty large city, about 5 million people. Uh, Fort Worth kind of borders next to Dallas as well. And so I'm in a larger city. Many of you are luckier uh, in that, you know, you don't live in quite as large of a town. It's a little easier for you, uh, you know, for people to get, you know, this place or another. But Dallas is the size. And goodness, you could drive for an hour and not make your destination depending upon what part of town it's in. So what I have here, folks, in Dallas is, is this. I know that when I'm on the phone with my prospect and I'm talking to someone who lives in, you know, maybe northeast Dallas or maybe they live in Arlington or maybe they live in south Dallas or inside the loop, whatever, uh, the last thing that I have time to do when I'm trying to get the appointment and get off the phone is try to be sitting there for five minutes debating with my prospect uh, where to meet to have the presentation. Okay. In addition to that, guys, I have a rule. I never like to plan in, in, a, in a location that I don't intimately know. Okay. I want to control my environment so I can have the best upper hand advantage possible. So what I have, folks, is I have in about five or six different parts of town have a standard location. Okay. For example, in northeast Dallas, I have a standard location that I show the plan to or pl show the plan at not every – Okay, guys, we got a little background noise on the speaker line. It's not that I show the plan there every single time, but I can tell you I show the plan at this one location about 99.9% .9 of every time I do a presentation in Northeast Dallas. Okay, it just happens to be a hotel lobby. Now, I also have the same thing in Northwest Dallas. Okay, so we have kind of a Northeast and Northwest part of town. Same thing with Northwest, Northwest Dallas. So if I'm meeting a prospect who lives in, you know, let's just say like the Denton area, for example, uh, you know, I already know where I'm going to meet them. I don't have to go, well, you know, where, where's a good place? Do you know, well, no, that place isn't there anymore. And, and then all of a sudden they get lost and I get lost. Or I walk into an environment where, you know, it's, uh, it's super loud or the lighting is terrible or whatever it may be. I like to be somewhere where I know that I'm going to go. Same thing is true uh, with meetings that I have inside the loop. I have a location that I use by the airport exact same nation every single time it's just uh, guys it's just it's just what we do and so you know you want to have those as well for yourself you also want to make sure that uh, that you have uh you know locations within those areas for different times of the day for example there are some places you might go for breakfast uh but you might not go for lunch or there's some places you might have lunch meetings at uh that you might not do dinner meetings okay you may have non-meal time uh, locations. You know, for example, in the northeast part of town, I've got a great restaurant that I love to go to for lunch. It's excellent for pre presenting. Uh, and then uh, some hotel lobbies you so enjoy lunch at, right? You know, some places aren't good, uh, you know, during the lunch hour. It's better when, when things are a little more quieter, you know, or you may have a rowdy happy hour crowd, things like that. I've even gone to locations during the times, uh, you know, that, uh, that I wanted to be able to use that location just to kind of get a sense of of where it's at. And guys, Angie and I do that. We've got our big Super Saturday coming up March the 8th. The hotel that we're using, uh, we're very familiar with. But before we ever did our first event at that hotel, she and I went to the hotel and we walked the property. So we knew exactly what we were going to get ourselves into, okay? The point, ladies and gentlemen, is know your location. Very important. Uh, you never, ever, ever, if you can't, okay, uh, ever go do a presentation uh, there in a uh, uh, location that you don't know intimately. Now, what are you looking for uh, in your location? Let me just share a few things that you're looking for. First of all, guys, you're looking for ambiance and you're looking for presentation. 
Let's be honest, guys. It may not be po politically correct, but the simple reality is, is that people uh, pay attention uh, to other people. In this business, guys, you are portraying uh, abundance. It can provide wealth, okay? And it's happening. We've got leaders in this business that make $10,000, 20000 30, Forty thousand dollars per week, guys. Per week in three hundred and sixty, not per month. So there's opportunities here for you to get very wealthy in this opportunity. And the simple reality is this: people say, "What's your number one product?" Chocolate. And although that's true, I got to also let you know that the number one product here will always be opportunity, guys. That's the number one thing people are looking for. Chocolate helps to provide that opportunity. So at the end of the day, guys, unless you're dealing with a retail customer. People are looking for opportunities. So the point is, your location can really set the tone uh, for communicating non-verbally, okay, that you are successful, that this is a successful company, and that this is a business that they could very well want to see themselves be a part of. And the thing about it, especially when it comes to hotel locations, you know, guys, and restaurants in some cases as well, I'll touch on those in a moment, but guys, hotel lobbies are free. You can do a one-on-one -on -one presentation at the Ritz-Carlton for the same price that you can do a one-on-one -on -one presentation at a Super 8. But let me ask you a question. What do you think provides a better ambiance or a better impression uh, to your prospect, the Super 8 or the Ritz? Okay, uh, You know, guys, and you don't have to go to the Ritz. It could be a Hyatt. It could be a Marriott. It could be a, a nice Hilton. The point, ladies and gentlemen, is that you set the tone with that location. The point to hobbies, they're all free, okay, every one of them. Now, they're not all the same, I will tell you that, but they're all free, and I'll cover that in a moment. Same thing is true with restaurants. You know, guys, it's interesting in that some of your higher-end restaurants, you know, guys, their lunch menu is no more expensive uh, chilies, no more expensive than a TGI Fridays or an Applebee's, okay? Their dinner might be three or four times more expensive, but oftentimes the lunch menus are not. Uh, same thing could be true in the case of them us serving breakfast, okay? So you're looking for ambiance, guys. You're looking for that first impression uh, of what type of uh, feeling, if you will, uh, is the location going to provide to you and to your prospects. So you may not be rubbing two nickels together, guys, but you can still set your bottom down in the lobby of a fine hotel, uh, and you can do it free of charge, okay? Now, a couple of other things I'll say. You're not just looking for nice hotels. You're also looking for uh, conducive environments, okay? For example, lighting. What is the lighting like inside of uh, the, uh, the hotel? Okay? The reality is that we do everything uh, brightly lit. You know, we were at a convention. We had a well-meaning employee that was offering to turn the lights down in the audience. I told her, do, do not do that. Turn every single light on that this place has. And you guys may recall, if you were there, we even brought in uh, – uh, uh, lighting to wash the stage from the back. I, I think I was seeing bright spots for about three days because that light from the back of the room was shining straight in my face for two, for two days, right? But, but you know, guys, that's just the deal. We keep things very well lit in this business in everything that we do. Another thing that you're looking for, okay, is noise levels, all right? Folks, it's not conducive. I mean, you know, some of the new hotels and restaurants kind of have the hip flair to them. And they kind of have the beat music playing in the background a little louder. Or, you know, but folks, that's not a conducive location for you to show the plan, okay? It doesn't mean you might not want to enjoy some time there when you're off and socializing, but you're not looking for that. You're looking for somewhere very well lit. You're looking for somewhere that is quiet, but but not too quiet. you got to make sure that uh, you can speak. I've been in situations where I've been thrown into a location before, and it was so quiet Every single person in the whole hotel lobby could hear what I was saying. I'm not referring to that either, okay? You obviously want to be able to have enough private conversation uh, with the table location and that sort of thing as you can, uh, you know, but, to, but you also don't want to have it be too loud with either music uh, or perhaps, you know, we've, uh, you know, had uh, situations where, uh, you know, we're trying to do presentations in uh, conventions that are hotel lobbies and, you know, you walk in, there's nowhere to sit, you know, and here you are, you look kind of foolish because you're trying to walk around with your prospect telling them that, they could make six figures in this exploding chocolate opportunity, and you don't even can't even find a table, you know, or, or you go in, it's just so busy. And, and so, again, guys, that's where it comes back to knowing your location, kind of having your comfort, comfort spots, you know, located so you know exactly what table you're probably going to sit at when you first walk in, right? You might even get to know the staff and the doorman, uh, you know, uh, here and there. You know, you'd be amazed what five to a doorman can do 
Uh, it's always impressive when you pull up to valet or pull up to the doorman and he welcomes you and says, well, hello, Mr. Aguilar, it's good to have you with us. Thank you for being here tonight. Or, uh, well, Mr. Fulcher, it's great to see you again. You know, that's impressive when your prospect goes, wow, they, they must come here often. Well, maybe you only go there for meetings and you took the five bucks every time, right? You'd be amazed at how that can work for you. But again, guys, you want to look at your lighting. You want to look at your noise levels, things like music. Another one as well, uh, be careful. Some hotel lobbies, uh, embassy suites are the worst. They all have the, uh, you know, kind of the old curtain lobby uh, uh, theme going on with the waterfalls and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, guys, you just very out in Birmingham is this way. I can't show the plan there because when you walk in, there's the huge waterfall sound. And the simple reality is it puts everybody to sleep, including the presenter, okay? And so you got to watch out for things like uh, uh, noise levels, and uh, you got to make sure that the atmosphere is conducive. It's not going to put everybody to bed. Uh, make sure it's nice uh, and well lit, okay? So the point, biggest lesson there, guys, is, uh, again, always have your location. Never show the plan if it can be prevented uh, in a place that you are not familiar with and you don't know the lay of the land, so to speak, okay? Uh, now, uh, point number five in becoming a master presenter, guys, is dressing the part. Listen, we are not an organization that's going to tell you that you got to wear a suit and tie to all your meetings. I don't, don't buy that. I've got a friend of mine who was in a network marketing business prior to ours, and uh, he and I met her for lunch one day, and he was wearing a suit. Uh, it's probably 150 degrees outside in from Dallas, and he's wearing a suit. He's sweating like crazy, and I remember that his neck was bulging out because the his tie was so tight. I just said, are you comfortable? <laughs> he was like, no. I said, take your tie off, man. Guys, you don't have to wear a suit and tie to look nice. You know, it's amazing. Uh, you know, you don't have to have expensive clothes. It's just a matter of doing your best with what you have. You know, little things like, you know, getting your shirt pressed uh, for $0.79 cent at the dry cleaner, okay? Spending three bucks to get your shoes shined, okay? Little things like that that can make a difference uh, to you, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, kind of looking the part, so to speak. But you just need to remember, guys, that you are your best advertisement, okay? And you're selling hope. You're selling opportunity. And it's difficult when you sit across the table from someone and you're sharing with them that you can make six figures in this opportunity and you look like you make less than, you know, than, than 50 bucks uh, a week, Okay. And again, guys, this does not mean that you have to have expensive clothes. When I first got started, I didn't have any of it. As a matter of fact, I used to go to thrift stores and actually uh, purchase clothes that were used uh, on consignment uh, at thrift stores because I, Angie and I at that time didn't have a lot of money. We lived in a small 800 square foot apartment and I couldn't afford to buy Italian suits and, and fine shoes and ties and things like that. So I would literally uh, go to thrift stores, guys, and I would purchase uh suits uh, that were on sale, that were used. I still have some of them today. Uh, it's amazing. I, I'll wear one one in particular. I'll wear it from time to time. I still get compliments on. I bought the suit 10 years ago. Probably paid 90% uh, less than what I would have paid in a department store uh, for the same, you know, this is suit, okay? So, again, guys, it's not about having to have fancy stuff. It's not about needing a Rolex watch. That stuff helps, but you don't need that, okay? The point is, doing the best with what you have. A lot of people just don't focus on this, and they, they don't think it matters. And, guys, I'm telling you, it does matter, okay? You need to look the part when it comes to doing your business. It could be, you know, the, you know getting your car washed and having a clean vehicle uh, versus a dirty vehicle. You don't need to drive a, a luxury car to be successful in building your business. I used to drive a pickup truck, okay? Uh, you know, but guess what? My pickup truck was clean. You know, it's not that you have to have a new car, but you need to have a clean car for those times your prospect needs to look out to your vehicle to get something out of the car, you know, or, or maybe you pull up to the front of the hotel and all of a sudden your prospect walks out at the same time you do and your car, you can't even see through the window. Somebody wrote, wash me on the side. You know what I'm saying? It's just little things like that, guys, that do make the difference. There's a, there's a book that came out about 20 years ago. Uh, it's called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. You may remember the, uh, uh, the book and, and the, the premise of the book I agree with, which was, you know, those of us we worry about life, you know, we can't do anything about it anyway, right? But I will tell you guys, when it comes to building this business, you need to learn to sweat the small stuff. The small things, ladies and gentlemen, make huge differences uh, in this business, guys. And again, in your appearance, dress, things like that. It's just, guys, just look professional. It could be sure again. I mean, guys, you can wear a nice pair of jeans, but the difference could be you can wear a blazer, okay? with those jeans. You've seen me do meetings that way many times. Uh, it could be the difference in wearing a pair of loafers versus a pair of tennis shoes, okay? 
right? combing your hair versus wearing a ball cap, shaving, you know, versus going unshaven. Things on those lines, guys, that uh, that matter. Okay. Another thing I'll mention to you when it comes to being a master presenter: be aware of personal hygiene. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, be, this is not maybe the most pleasant conversation to have, but it's the truth. Uh, be aware of things like bad breath. Okay, be aware of things like body odor. Be aware of of uh, you know how you present yourself if you're eating, and you know uh, you know things like uh, you know dining uh, etiquette. Things that uh, I was with a uh, with a prospect one time. We were entertaining a, a networker. Myself and a gentleman that uh, was in my downline, and uh, we had just had a great lunch meeting with a, a steakhouse, uh, Lowry's Primary Steakhouse in Dallas, and we had a great lunch. And this guy was looking like he was going to come on board, and, and I don't know what I'm going to tell you about the reason he didn't or not, but I can tell you that uh, he didn't come on board, even though it looked like he was going to. But as we were all leaving, we all went to the restroom uh, because we had you know been, had, had a longer a longer lunch, and so uh, everyone uh, the, the the three of us each needed to use the restroom, so we went to the restroom and. And, uh, and did our business, and uh, and then he and I, the prospect, and I went to the uh, sink, and we began to wash our hands. Uh, and the sponsor, the gentleman in my downline, who was recruiting this person, uh, did not wash his hands. And, uh, and I remember the prospect looking at him, kind of almost in shock, if you will. Uh, the guy didn't wash his hands after going to the bathroom, you know. And uh, I think he avoided shaking his head, if I remember. <laughs> my point is, guys, small things, big difference, right? You wouldn't think this stuff would matter, and most of the time, it probably wouldn't, but at that time that you catch yourself in the restroom at the same time as your prospect, or the prospect happens to walk out just as you're getting in your car, you know what I'm saying? They happen to, uh, to lean forward uh, and give you a hug or shake just after you finish eating some onions. You know, one good rule of thumb is always have breath mints in your bag or whatever it may be. But uh, just being aware of personal hygiene, guys, being aware of dress, uh, again, the small things, they don't, most of this stuff is free. Uh, if anything, it may cost a few pennies. It's the awareness that matters, okay? When it comes to doing meetings, ladies and gentlemen, here's the cardinal rule, okay? Never, ever, ever, a master presenter is never late to a meeting, folks. As a matter of fact, a master presenter is always at the location before their prospect. If you want to be a master presenter, you can't be rolling into meetings late. And guys, listen, all right, I know why you're in network marketing. You're in network marketing for the same reason I am. The last thing I feel like doing is being in a corporate job, okay? Uh, I don't. I don't want to get up and put a suit on, guys. I don't want to have to be in an office environment where you, know, you have all your corporate America politics and all this and that, and you know you got people that are watching you all the time, and telling you when to come and when to go. And I don't want any of that either, ladies and gentlemen. But listen, you are running what could be a multi-million dollar business. You got to be professional. One of the most rude things that you can do in business, guys, is being late. It's one of the most rudest things that can be done. It's incredibly disrespectful and something we all deal with from time to time. I'll tell you how to deal with it when, when it happens. But guys, you uh, you don't want to be late, okay? But not only do you not want to be late, folks, you want to be early. Matter of fact, for a leader, okay, early is on time. If you're on time as a leader, you're 15 minutes early, okay? Now, I'll tell you why in a second. Be sure with you what to do with the times where you are late, okay? If indeed you're going to be late, guys, give the person who's meeting you as much advance notice as you possibly can. All right, you'll be amazed at uh, how you can avoid someone being upset uh, because even when you're extremely late if you give them as much advance notice as possible. You know, guys, I've had to get me well have You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't find a. I recently I was traveling and uh, was trying to get to a meeting and I was going to the airport from the meeting. I was leaving the country and I couldn't find my passport. Guys, stuff like that's going to happen to all of us, right? And so, but, but as soon as I knew I couldn't find it, the very first thing I did is I sent a text to the prospect that I was meeting actually at the airport, at the height of the airport, uh, so I could go and check my bags and such you know, to be able to meet with this gentleman. But I sent him a text uh, very early on. I mean, it was probably 45 minutes before the meeting. And, uh, and he made a comment to me. He said, man, I really appreciate you sending me that text to let me know. Uh, he said, because I was able to get some extra work out of my office before I go over here to meet you. And so he got there late because he knew I was coming, right? And I was going to be late. So the point is, guys, is always, if you can, give as much advance notice to the person as possible. Or in a rule, if you're going to be late, always let the other person know. Give them a heads up, guys, and let them know, I'm going to be late. I apologize. I'll be there as fast as I can. Small hint, gesture of courtesy. If you want to make somebody mad, leave them sitting there on the curb or leave them sitting in a uh, you know, a table in a restaurant or something waiting there for you, and here you are, they're on time, you know, 
I mean, they, they could probably find some of the things to do as well. well. I'm sure. I know for me, if you lay on me, I'm okay with it. But give me a damn coach because you know what? I could probably find a few things to do. Uh, <clears> that extra 15 minutes also. Uh, but you know, I probably wouldn't choose to sit there waiting by the curb or choose to sit there waiting in a restaurant. I might still be uh, in my office or up in my hotel room or whatever. You know, getting some emails knocked out, things along those lines, okay? But, uh, but as a rule, guys, I mean, it's going to happen from time to time. But as a rule, I'm just 15 minutes early. And I'll tell you the reason why. You always want to be at the location before your prospect ever arrives, okay? For a few reasons. Number one is seating. Guys, when you come to be a master presenter, a master presenter never allows the prospect to choose where they're going to sit, okay? Uh, I don't do this in, in, in anything. We were just actually at a golf club, and we had dinner. Uh, we had a wonderful celebration dinner for Chris Carlton and Jack Dusty's. It was incredible. Um, we, we ate like kings and queens. It was just awesome. But guys, you know, the first thing that I did, uh, matter of fact, Andy and I had talked about that's where people were going to sit before we even got uh, left our hotel room. We already discussed where the party, you know, who was going to be sitting where uh, for the party, okay? Because again, guys, that's a meal, a two hour meal, and those conversations you know, aren't by accident. So I want certain people uh, by one another. I want certain people to get to know one another. For example, we had uh, Ginger and Greg Siver, who are uh, Ginger's vet, Greg, the uh, a dentist, and we had uh, Dr. Saeed and Tammy, uh, who were at the uh, uh, lead conditioner we had recently, and I mean, purposely uh, had said by Dr. De Silva, uh, you know, we kind of called her Dr. Squatter down there, but she basically so that, you know, so they kind of, you know, they're all kind of physicians and doctors and medical experts, and it was they had a great time getting to know each other and just, you know, they share a common interest, you know. And so I do it at big dinners, I do it at recognition uh, events, and never, ever done uh, by accident. Okay, uh, but also guys on the one-on-ones in particular because you want your prospect. A couple of things about seeing guys, you never want your prospect being distracted. You want your prospect to be focused on you. Okay, and it reminds me of a, this kind of lesson. It reminds me of a, uh, back in the '80s, there was an infomercial that used to be on for an audio program uh, for students, and it was something parents were marketing to parents. It was called "Where There's a Will, There's an A." And many of you may remember the uh, the infomercial. Basically, it was you know all these good students that had gone from you know bailing out of school to making straight A's uh, after buying this program and winning the uh, you know, recommendations. One of the number one recommendations in that program, which was incredibly simple, was always have your students sit, uh, your son or daughter, uh, make sure they sit on the front row. The reason for that is because if they sit on the back row, not only would they have to be watching the teacher, but they would automatically be distracted by all the different conversations and. And gestures and you know movement of all the students that were in between them and the teachers. So one of the number one rules they said was always sit on the front row. Well, that same rule applies here when it comes to your prospects. You never ever want your prospect to be facing anything but you. Matter of fact, my golden rule is I don't want my prospect seeing anything but me. That's it. If I can help it, right? So let's just say hypothetically, in a poor top, I got two seats facing the wall. I got two seats that face you know one toward the lobby, the other one toward the window. I will never, ever my prospect uh, uh, at the chair uh, window or lobby. But you need to realize that if your prospect arrives first, the natural inclination is for the prospect to sit. You know, they're not going to put their back to the lobby or to the window. They're going to sit where they can see the lobby, and that way they see you when you come in, et cetera. That's why you have to, so you can get seated and make sure you can choose where your prospect is going to sit. So, for example, I'm right-handed. I always want my prospect seated on my right or the four-top you know, table. I'm right-handed. That way I can hold my hook up with my left arm, and I can write with my right hand, okay? If you're left-handed, you might want to do it the other way. If I've got two people that I'm meeting with, and I've got a distributor alongside with me, I always want my distributor to smile so that I'm able to hold the book up, and I don't have to constantly play a swivel back. <laughs> with every single person, right? In addition to that, guys, you, and here's a little skin to some master presenting conference call. You never want two prospects uh, seated at the table looking at one another because they will communicate non verbally through eye contact. And most of what they communicate may not be in your favor, okay? It may, it may not give you the unfair advantage, it might give them the unfair advantage, right? You may have one prospect really excited, he looks at the other prospect right across the table, uh, and he looks at him and rolls his eyes. You can lose the meeting in the air. So the point is, guys, is that again, be the master presenter, small detail, be there 15 minutes early, 
and you got your rule. That's all on time. You got a parking garage you got to deal with, and you're going to be there early enough to park your car, get inside, uh, get to the table, and uh, choose your seat. If you have uh, the distributors that are with you, I mandate uh, very rarely do I ever want to show the plan without a distributor being there. Uh, I want them to learn, get trained, but but I, I tell them, hey, if you're, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late, and if you're late, you're not admitted, I need you to be there, so you can be seated also, so we can do this the right way, and create that unfair advantage, and do our best to get these folks in your, uh, in your list, okay? Now, a couple of other things uh, as well, um, I mean, there are early guys who really do surprises, you know? There's always going to be surprises. It could be construction going on at the hotel. Maybe the lot is halfway you know, under construction. By the way, if you haven't been there in a while, good idea to make a phone call. Hey, any changes at the hotel? Any, any construction going on? So, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, even if you have a reservation at the hotel, they won't tell you. I have a hotel show that you're recently, the whole place is halfway torn down. down. I made a reservation and they didn't say a word. I showed them what I'm buying, right? Um, um, I'm not talking about what you're on. on there, but. But again, yeah, if you haven't been there in a long time, I need you to put a phone call over. You know, hey, there's a big change when any kind of construction law is something along those lines. Very rare that'll happen, but the stuff does happen, okay? Or it could be uh, you know, things are blocked off or parking lots are closed or whatever. So it's just good to get there early. Uh, just so you're in control. That's all it is, okay? Now, one other thing that I'll touch on when it comes to arriving and, and, uh, and having the unfair advantage is waste staff, okay? Wait a when you What do you do when you want to meet someone at a restaurant? You want to give a presentation. Uh, you may or may not want to be buying the prospect's lunch, uh, but you may, or may, you may or may not uh, want to be doing that. You also may or may not want to be eating uh, while you're trying to present. You may very well not want to eat yourself, or you might. That's up to you. Typically for me, if I'm giving a presentation, I'm there for business, I don't want to eat. Uh, but guys, if you sit down in a waste down section, the waiter or waitress is going to approach you to get some food, and if you just sit down with your prospect, the prospect says, yeah, and I'll have that filet mignon and lobster for 50 bucks, right? So what I like to do, guys, is get there early, and, uh, you know, I'm not in a situation where we're having a breakfast meeting. Uh, I like to get there early, and I'll, I'll simply just put them down. Got to have a guys. You'll be amazed, okay? And this is just in life. You will be absolutely amazed at what a $5 bill for you in life. Five bucks. All you simply have to do, guys, is pull a five dollar bill and the toy that is I've got a uh, I've got a colleague that's gonna be arriving here in a few moments and uh in our just gonna kind have of, uh we just kind of some juice, uh maybe some tea, something like that. We're not going to uh order so please don't all for food. So we're not gonna have breakfast, we're just gonna have our meeting in a way, okay? And just a little bit of thank you very much. You know, guys, the term tip is actually an acronym that stands for to ensure promptness. To ensure promptness. In America, we kind of have gotten away from this. The original concept of the tip uh, was to actually tip before the meal, to tip before the service, to ensure promptness from the staff, okay, from the way wages. Nowadays, we do the other way around. We usually tip at the end of the meal. I tell you what, man, try this amount of tip before you have the meal. And watch how attentive that waiter or waitress is uh, to your table. Okay, uh, it's amazing, amazing uh, exercise in psychology. But, but again, guys, when you get there and you're doing that waiter, like at a restaurant, for example, or maybe you're just in a lounge at the hotel, but there's a waiter or cocktail which is kind of walking around. Uh, you know, another thing too, if you're the eating bunch and you may not want alcohol, I usually don't like to mix alcohol uh, with business meetings. You know. You may not mind, and it's your personal choice, but the point is, guys, if you go to the lobby during the happy hour, time before the PM or beyond, uh, you sit in your lounge, it's probably normal for the doctor to just offer you a cocktail, and there's nothing more frustrating when you're there to do business and you're going to go across the street. Yeah, well, that's why I'm just saying, or maybe it's you're like, no, I don't know, we're here to talk about serious business, but guys, you're just made that point. So that's why it's good to be there early, take care of the way it's done, you can drug them. Uh, not offer alcohol, you can instruct them not offer menus, you, you can instruct them not offer food if you want to, just you can even instruct them to hey, you know, just bring us some water, that's all you want. Please don't offer any of this that if you want to do. You know, guys, for me, when I was coming up to the business, my name was I I didn't I did the one on one a lot, I didn't have the time uh to live because you never started enough money to be able to be you know buying lunch a lot, you know, food lots a lot, I just show up for five bucks, that was my that was my budget. 
Okay. And when you're doing the introduction and you're doing the application, you want to do it. You never edify the speaker's benefit. I mean, when it comes to introducing a speaker, I'm not going to edify their benefit. I'm going to edify for the benefit of the audience. Okay. And to edify them to transfer credibility to them. Guys, we can't assume that you're on training calls because we can't assume that. So you always, always, always edify. But it's better coming from a third party than it is from the speaker themselves. No better for someone else to edify you than for you to edify yourself to the prospect, right? So it's always powerful when you have a sponsor in a server. It can certainly do the application, do the up on it, no problem. But certainly better when it's someone who knows the guest and they know the prospect and so they can at that point in time, they kind of read that gap, if you will. Just make sure the application focuses on the presenter, not focused on the, uh, on the prospect. Okay? Now, if you're an observer, uh, you're in the presentation with the master presenter, uh, here's a couple things. Number one is the uh, uh, is taking notes. Remember, the number one reason that you're there uh, is to learn. Okay? So the, the person who attends the presentation should be taking notes. It should be there early. Okay? They should be, they should be ready, ready to roll, they should, should be looking the part, ready, ready to add and contribute to the meeting, and they are there to take notes. Guys, listen, couple things, things, all right? First, first of all, if I'm going to do a presentation for you, I won't be there if there's going to go off. I can't be there, I understand. But if you can be there, I won't want you to be there. It's like we talked about here on the training call on Monday night, guys. You need to be there, okay? Now, nothing is more irritating. Then if I'm giving a presentation for a distributor and they get up, they get text messaging, they're surfing the internet. I mean, listen, that's going to be the case. If they're not going to participate, they're not going to take notes, I won't give the presentation. I've done it before. I obviously, but I have literally closed the book in the middle of a presentation before because I've had a distributor who is you know, sitting there sending text messages on the phone laughing, not paying any attention. And obviously, they know what I'm saying. They thought we wouldn't have either of them, right? And even if they don't know how to. It's respectful. I would just show the same courtesy. I don't care if it's my dad or not. If I'm sitting there in the presentation, my dad or not, if you're in the presentation, I am still going to be seated, uh, leaning forward, without no slump, not slump, not slump, not slump, sure, taking notes. I'm interested. Not in my honor, not in my honor, even if I may be in my honor. Okay? So if you're going to be the observer, guys, it is crucial and critical to realize you play a role and you play a part in that presentation with your word on. So, so it's critical that that observer is there taking notes, guys, okay? okay? And now, as, as a speaker, as a master presenter, you can't assume that you're you down, down on the notice. You, you have, have to tell them. You have, you have to say, listen, I want to do a little pre-briefing today. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important to have you do the uh, introduction because this is obviously your big guest. And uh, uh, your prospects are going to do the intro. You're going to introduce us, us and edify me. You may do a little, little bit of edification for the prospect, but 90% needs to be on the speaker. So, so you let them know that. But you let them know, listen, once the presentation, presentation starts, starts uh, I need you to make, make sure your phone is off. Please do not get up, up unless I'm absolutely unavoidable. And please make sure to take notes the entire time. Okay? And let the prospect know. Now, another big one is the interruptions. Together, uh, uh, play, play five or ten sets of these up, he goes, and just carry them with you. 
Okay. Uh, that, uh, that way, way your, your person can take, take notes, notes on the actual slide. What, what a concept. They think about that. Where, where are they the most likely to learn, learn the read their notes? Is it going to be on the notebook that the notes get buried? buried? Uh, I don't know if they're in their desk or they can't find them. What if they have their notes on the actual presentation slide? What if they can actually take notes on each slide that actually you were talking? They can make notes to themselves about how you did it. What, what you said, the story of the page you gave. You know, think from those lines, you're in that presentation, they could actually write those things down so they could then take that, that with them if they wanted to. They, they could actually use that for practice and think on those lines. Okay? But, again, but again, don't assume they're going to have that unless you want them to. Okay? Okay? Make sure that you are not bring some of those in your bag. I would also encourage you to have extra notepads and pens in your bag for your prospects. Because the studies, studies have shown more writing that the prospect does, the more likely they are to, to sign up and enroll in, in your business. business okay? okay? So, so wherever you're going to come back, that leads me to my next point, point which is being, being prepared. prepared. Guys, a master, master presenter is always prepared, prepared okay? okay? First, First of all, business, business cards, cards, okay? okay? You get business, business cards, we've got, 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 got LS360, LS360 uh, tools, I believe it is, with like 50 different versions of business cards, you have got more. So, so we'll be doing, doing your own, own business card. I don't care if it's a 360 card, your own private card, card you can which one. It's just whatever really is easier. Just have, have a business, business card. card. Okay. Not, Not a business card, card from your previous work. Unless you've only been with a few days, please get some new cards made. I'm joking, but at the same time, you do an age where I've got leaders that are old in the company, giving out old cards and stuff. But to have your business cards, guys, you've got to have products to sample, okay? Uh, very, very important. You need to have pens, pens and notepads for prospects. Notepads for your prospects. Very, very important. Uh, you need presentation uh, presentation slides uh, for, for distributors. Okay, okay don't, don't assume they're going to have those for yourself. You obviously, you obviously need to have your own presentation book. book. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we use at 60 is very uh, simple. It's not high tech. It's got high pads and all that stuff. That's, that's, that's fabulous. fabulous. I have an iPad. You'll, you'll still notice, notice I've never, never used an iPad. iPad. This is an old school, black, half inch, three ring binder with, with clear black box sleeves, sleeves, with my presentation slides back to back inside of those sleeves. Why do I do, I do that? that? Do I do it because, 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 because I like that? that. Oh, I like that, guys. But, but I don't, don't want to do the presentation, the presentation if I'm not going to think they need an iPad to be successful. That's why the video is so powerful. Everybody can play a video. I'm not going to do a video for you soon. But in the meantime, guys, go to Kikos. Don't just sell home, by the way. I'm your homemade printer. Spend 15 bucks, 20 bucks, and get these made at Kikos on the fire. Every printer, right there on the fire, I know why. On the fire, every printer, get your presentation book made up. And that way, you have it in a black, half inch, three ring binder. Okay? Very important, right? Next, you need third party credibility. Uh, you know, I think this is a successful home reprint. reprint. Uh, the uh, energy I have done. That's, that's an excellent for the ability to use the first one I've worked with. Our VP of sales is just a story of like 50 cents a piece. Uh, you also have, have free chocolate brochures. Uh, you have company literature. Some of the stuff is even free. It can be printed for free. The only thing I'll tell you is invest a few bucks in your business and get them printed off with Kikos or Hot Shots. Those are the only two things I'll tell you. Don't print them from your home computer. Copy, 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 Good idea for you to get your cards, especially if you have a, a challenge, challenge or something like that. 
Definitely all culture members. And none of those are the point of these guys is that uh, you want to try to get a good quality can. You definitely want to make sure that you get your card and show your professional. Okay. okay. Number, Number two, two all right, right, is, is you, you want, want to make sure that you are pre closing. Guys, this is so important. Want to get the unfair advantage? Ladies and gentlemen, how would you like to really have every prospect you ever show the plan to? Be about 75% in the company before, before you, you ever, ever go to the, to the first slide. Okay. okay. You, you can do it, folks. It's called the pre close. All right. So, so to give you an example of how this works, you're at your table, table your prospect arrives with his wife, and then you sit there, there, you all greet one another, say your pleasure, you all sit down, you buy them with a business card, you welcome them, you have a little bit of small talk, and then obviously at that point in time, it's time for the business, right? So you distributed there with you, with you uh, if they're the first person who's kind of brought all parties together, that, that distributor, uh, you know, go ahead and introduce these guys. We're really thankful, thankful for both of you being here. You're both, uh, you know, two people, people I have tremendous respect for. You know, uh, uh, in this case, if I'm Mr. Steven, I've told you about, about Mr. Smith's background, background uh, and what you've been able to accomplish. Mr. Smith, Smith, this is Steven Hobbs. And that's when he goes into that education. So, again, not just regarding the prospect. Uh, but, but but who's the person, person doing the selling? That if who's doing the selling, right? right? You don't, you don't want to jump in an unfair disadvantage. Well, all of a sudden, the prospect is the big cheese, or you are trying to you know, know, dip into doing you a favor by placing your uh, company with assistance, right? And that's why the distributor sponsor wants to make sure we identify who we want to speak to. I don't know what I said earlier. I'm the one who will identify you. How long have you been here to identify you? You're not going to have to call us. Why do they think that we do that? Well, we do it. Number one, because I'm not going to say what I'm going to say about them. But the only reason I do that is to empower them to basically be able to go out and grow their business, which is also a business. And so never be stingy with that vacation. All I would be willing to give that edification out and the different training they're giving today, man, that is so powerful. And so, and so you, you sit down, you go through your education, and the uh, sponsor makes sure that you know, now, when it's time for that to happen, uh, at that point, time, obviously, you want to return over to the presenter, who should have the floor, floor, so to speak. And at that time, what you want to do is you want to go through your pre closes, okay? Close, guys, it's not, it's not anything, anything really hard, hard. It's not, it's not anything about a strong arm by, by any means, but it's getting down to a couple of agreements up front. Up front. This, this is a rule that I use, you know, before I'll show, show a presentation, I basically, I basically do this. It's, it's a law with me. I've done, I've done some of the presentations that ended up not being approval. Just what I've done since I'm on the front end, I've made it even made it through the floor. At least I would have known more than it wasn't going to be approved, right? right? Uh, a couple of the pre close questions, questions that, I like that I like to start with, that I like to ask. Number, number one, one is tell, tell me, I'm going to write these down, so tell me, Mr. Prospect, what's, what's got, got you looking right now? Okay. What, what has you looking, looking right now? now? Now, the reason I like to ask that question is I want to know what's got you looking. That's the last thing I have time to do is sit there and show the presentation for an hour or 30 minutes or whatever somebody and to have them say, well, it looks good, it sounds great, I'm not really interested in doing anything different. If they're not interested in doing anything different, then A, you know, we have a problem. Maybe they don't need a presentation or B, they really are looking, but they just kind of like they're not. I just like to say, tell me, what's got you looking? How'd you get the response? I wasn't really looking, but Joe called me. Okay, well, that's cool. Let me ask you a question. You know, they make all the money you can spend, bro. You know, you like one more time. Yeah, so I can dish that out. I have a little bit of a fight to you, too. And I said, well, great. And I always use the Bill Bell found as a master presenter. I know exactly how you feel. I felt the exact same way when I found was. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, called being a master, master presenter. It's also called recording, recording this, so you can go back and listen to it again. Yeah. Point, point guys, guys I'm asking, ask, tell me, what's, what's got you looking right now? now? Okay, great. great. Well, listen, well, listen now, my next question is, okay, great, John. John. By the way, make a note, big star. star. You, you want to say the prospect's name as many times as you can. At least 10 times in every presentation, you should be saying the prospect's name. Guys, listen. The sweetest, the sweetest sound, sound to anyone's ears, ears is the sound of their own name. Okay. Okay. Wow. wow. Very Great. powerful. Guys, don't let this so overwhelm you. Like, gosh, I've got to remember this. I've got to remember that. Remember, remember the Chinese proverb, okay? Proper, okay? It's, it's not, not until, until we do something, something that we remember to understand it. So this, so this is where the doing part comes in. But we 
He also, also has a space repetition on the board in this call. Place them up on the disk side. You can download it, put it on the iPod, your iPhone, if you're your MP3, you can listen to it over and over again. All this stuff that I'm sharing with you is this. True story, I put these together in the night for about 15 minutes. You know, I did it, couldn't find my master presenter notes. I'm not sure I got this new computer. And so I couldn't find them. So I just sat down and everything I'm telling you all came from memory. Why? Because I know this. Uh, I need a little bit of notes to guide myself, but I probably could have sat here totally with no notes and pull all this out of memory because I know the information. I promise you. The first day I started, all this was extremely overwhelming. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to learn this thing. You will learn this, but it's not going to happen in life. That's why it's called a master presenter. Most things take a little bit of time. Right? So, so it goes into you as well. Okay? Okay? So don't, so don't be intimidated. intimidated right? You listen can listen to the recording, recording you'll, you'll do it a few times, times and you'll get better each time. With the practice, practice, uh, perfect, perfect practice, practice makes, uh, makes me feel the same guy, right? right? And, so and so the point of the guys, you know, is go my first question, my next question to the prospect is, what are you doing to your question about? Using his name. Uh, uh, man, so I could show you a way, okay, where, where you, you guys, guys your, your wife, wife, Sarah, uh, could literally earn six, six figures, okay, uh, in your part time hours, not affecting anything that you currently do, uh, you know, would that, would that be something that would interest you? Okay, yeah, and, and, and I would say, say, yeah, yeah I'm going to be nodding. That would interest you. So, let me ask you a question. If I could show you, uh, way, way to, you know, know to, to make, make a six figure and not taking anything you can do, uh, you know, John, you could find a few hours to invest in that on a, just on a regular basis. Could you maybe get a few hours here and a few hours there? Okay. okay. And, and, and since you know, yeah, I certainly could do that. Why do I ask that question? Why do I want to get the time objection out of the way? Why do I want to get the time over my presentation book? Okay. The other thing I also want to get out is the money objection. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, I'll say, so if I can show you a way, way to get that, that what we have to do is real, and you really did believe you could make a six-figure income, but the fact that you can do, do uh, you would have, have at least a couple, couple hundred, hundred bucks, bucks to invest, invest into, into the business, wouldn't you? And I thought, I'm not her, I'm not her, and I'll probably wait for the answer. Yes, I have at least a couple hundred dollars that I can invest. Why do I have to ask that question? I, I asked that question, question because, because the last time I wanted to do hire a president, she should get out of the end of the have enough money or she has no money, money. You can't, you can't sign up. Now, now I've done that kind of work where the first time I don't. Uh, you know, so I just couldn't afford that. Well, guys, at least I can put that on the table. And I can say, well, okay, I certainly respect that. I'm going to ask you a question. I want to take you to come up with it if you like to start today. Excuse me, let me get a grab a drink of water. I'm talking for about an hour here. Uh, okay, okay, great. Thank you. Uh, uh, I might say, say uh, uh, well, if there's, there's someone, someone that you might call that could, call that could potentially have out there, there and you need a little bit of assistance. Bit of assistance. <coughs> and so the, so the point is, is I'll, 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 I'll find that that's, that's something that is a possibility. I've had people say, no, I can't go it. I don't know where to find it. And I'm still giving a presentation. The point is, you know what you're getting into when it comes to that presentation. I want to cover the time, guys. I want to the money. The final thing that I'm going to cover is the decision. So what I say to the last thing I'm going to say is 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 the last I just no, 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 no. I don't bring my business model down. Now. Okay. okay. It's a it's very, very wide, wide, very delicate, very modest basis. Modest basis. Uh, uh, that's a question that I like to ask. And again, and again the reason I do it is they say, I couldn't move forward, forward today. today. So, so that's, that's interesting. They'll tell me a little bit about that. What does that mean? Well, you know, my wife's not here. I don't make decisions about my wife. You know, I think we can handle that equation. Now, if I'm dealing with a cold market person, I'm a lot stronger. Uh, because when it comes to the cold market, you can be, be waste a lot of time, time you know, so if you have maybe an ad you or something, something like that, or someone else on social media, media, I ask, I ask these questions a lot more of a fun way, way, because the yeah, yeah, last thing I want to do is sit down and show a presentation for somebody that's never going to do anything like that. Does that make sense? So don't let those questions intimidate you. Four questions that you're basically asking again. Our uh, first question is, is are you asking me about five, five if you want to include the, uh, the intro, but number one is, what has you looking? Number one, what's got you looking right now? 
number two. So let me answer your question. If, if I can show you something here today, incredibly unique, be done very part time, 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 anything you currently do, you have to have an interest in that, wouldn't you? Okay, okay great. So, so uh, now, now, you know, a couple things here is this, it's just two hours, hours uh, of time on a weekly basis. This would take, I assume, to make six figure income. You could find a few hours a week, right? Okay, great. And, you know, just want to make sure as well, before we get started, it does, it does take at least a couple hundred bucks to watch what we're doing here, here, just some startup materials, materials and brochures, and, 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 and that's not a problem for you this time, is it? Okay, cool. And finally, uh, you like what you see, I do assume you guys can make a decision more for this guy, right? Okay, awesome, excellent. Well, here's, here's what, what I want to do. I'm going to ask you a question, right? You or anybody you know about chocolate? And guys, at that point in time, I'm going to pull out my chocolate presentation book, but it's also when I pull out some samples. I always want my prospects to eat chocolate before the presentation begins. Critical and crucial. Before the presentation, in fact, I want chocolate, I want them to eat, and I want to eat. And I use it to this last is the, the pure energy. Why? So I want them to wake, wake up. up. I want them to be excited. I want them to be energized, energized right? Pure, pure energy. energy. So very, very important. Very important. Okay. okay. And so, and so at that point in time, I'm going to dive into my presentation. I'm going to get a few highlights in the presentation here in just a moment. It's not the presentation itself that's the most important thing. Our presentation is very, very easy. Okay. You just learn the presentation. Really through space, space repetition. repetition. So, so what I want you to remember about showing the plan, plan is that, is that the person, person you're showing it to has never seen the presentation. Their presentation. So they, so don't, they don't know if it's a good presentation. presentation. They, don't they don't know if it's a bad presentation. presentation. They've, never They've never seen it before, right? right? And so, and so don't, don't worry about, about being great. great. You don't, you don't, don't need, need to wait, wait to show it. I have people that, I'm just not ready. I need a few more weeks. Oh, guys. Come on. You need to do is figure up a couple for you. And you're, you're out the door, door and ready to start. When I first got this, this is business in Network Market, my life I lived uh, in North, North Carolina, Carolina. I lived, you know, I don't know, for a 10-hour drive, you know, something, you know, something like, like that. that. And if I could wait, wait on him, he'll show the plan for me. me. This is this before webinars and Skype and all that. I'd still be waiting. I mean, it wouldn't happen. I had to go out and get my own business started myself, just learning and listening to the conference calls and then listening and recording a presentation or two. By the way, I don't mind if people were doing a presentation. If they won't pull out their phone or they won't pull something out, I'll do presentations sometimes and I feel like I'm in a cell phone because I've had to five, ten phones on my conference table and people just recording the presentation so they can listen to it over and over and over and over again, right? And so the presentation part is really the easy part, guys. It's really becoming a master presenter. My experience is is people don't show the presentation. What they struggle with is the board and they struggle with the app part. That's why I wanted to spend the majority of our time tonight really on becoming a master of what, what to do before and what to do after. Okay. Okay. So, you, so you, you know, getting your presentation, the thing I say to you, once we have a video, video you want to use that, that video pretty much exclusively. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about, about even if you're not on one, have a little portable laptop, laptop with you, you play that, that video, and you take notes during the video. Because let me ask you a question. Is it easier for that person to ask if they can play a video? Or is it easier for that person to ask if they can flip their pages and point? Okay, you and all both know the answer, right? So we can get a video, half inch wide, three ring binder, presentation book, okay? And of course, obviously, you have paperwork inside of that book, well, something we didn't mention on the list of things to have, but you've got to have your paperwork, you've got to have four pieces of paperwork. Every, every presentation, presentation like, like this now, first and foremost, application. Application, that's number one. Number two, two your win sheet on a double-sided photocopy. I suggest, suggest color for your win sheet. That's the only color, color you need, need in paperwork. Okay? Okay? Number, number three, current, current promotion. promotion. What type of promotion are you currently running? running? Number, number four, the next, next event registration, registration flow. Those are always standard four pieces of paperwork that you need. Anytime, Anytime you are you giving a, a uh, present, very, very, very important. Okay. okay. Now, now uh, uh, here, we, here go, we go, guys. Uh, uh, you, you are, are you know, kind of giving, kind of giving the present. I like, I like to, to use a red felt tip marker, marker uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to kind of catch my prospects' attention. Here's your slides. 
you know, inside, inside of a clear plastic, plastic sleeve, sleeve, it's really easy, easy for you to, you know, kind of, kind of wipe, wipe this off. off. Well, I might like catch their attention with a red, felt it non permanent marker, marker to kind, kind of be moved into the presentation, presentation and kind of keep their eyes, eyes on, the on the slides. And then you guys can just give, give, give your presentation. That part is the simplest part of all. I want to shift gears. I want to talk a little bit about the clothes. This is where many people struggle. They don't know how to close. They don't know what to say at the end, if you will. Okay? Uh, number one, guys, guys, we have, we have built in one of the, one of the most, most incredible closes in the history of network marketing, marketing with our, our micro projects and our waiting rooms. rooms. You see, guys, you see, guys the, waiting the waiting room works really very really simple. It kind of goes like this, okay? okay? Every single, Every single person who joins your, your team, team okay, okay, in the, in the month, month that you, you join gets placed, placed into the organization at the exact same time. So let's so just say hypothetically at the end of this, of this month, month, there are 100 people that have joined your team this month. Well, let me ask you a question. How would you, how would you like an opportunity to have all 100 placed below you? Okay? You can actually get a head, head start with over 100 people on your team, or 50, or 200, or whatever the goal may be. But I'd like to ask people a simple question. If you didn't know what marketing before, let me ask you. Okay? How many people did that the last company that you were involved in give you your very first day in your downline, downline that you were getting paid on so that you can have a proper head start to launch your business. Guys, I, I love, love that question, question because the answer, answer every single time, time is zero. They gave, they gave me zero. zero. And I like to ask them, let me ask you a question. If I gave you 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 people down below you your very first day so that you had a head start and you can get paid on everything that's fit for those 100 people doing their life, which would you be willing to get started today? Okay. That, that close, guys, guys I'm sorry, that's, that's the most elite of ever. It's, it's absolutely amazing. amazing. Okay. okay. It takes, it takes away, away every single, single you know, question of mine. It takes away all their objections. The bottom, the bottom line is, I've got these people going in. Let, let me put them beneath you. So the point is, ladies and gentlemen, you have to use the waiting, waiting room, okay? okay? You, have you have to work, work the projects. projects. Oh, you don't have, have to. to. But if you, but want, if you want to really be a master, master presenter, presenter, and if you, if you want to get uh, incredible, incredible results from your presentations, you want to make, make sure, sure that you're using, using the waiting room in your closes, closes okay? okay? Crucial and critical. All right, now, now next, next is this. Okay, you got to ask for the order. When they say, yes, I'd like to do that, you say, fantastic, okay? Would you like to work at the top of the uh, top of this organization, would you like to go to the bottom, okay? okay? Just, just pick your pack, leader, leader uh, builder, builder <coughs> what they say, and then they don't know where you want to get placed, and we'll take care, care of it for you. At that, that point, time, time, guys, you literally, literally pull, pull out the piece of paper, you pull out the application, and you actually sit there in their hand and ask them to fill out the paperwork right then. This is more some people get a little bit tough. Uh, kind of jittery, kind of jittery but guys, listen, listen, you're going to take the time, time to meet up, spend the hour, hour between your drive, drive time, time and such to meet, to meet this person. Uh, guys, you've got to ask for the You can't be timid. They'll say the timid network markers have skinny goods, right? You can't be timid. You've got to ask for it. So you put the paperwork in their hand. And the guys, once you put that paperwork in their hand, here's the golden rule. He or, or she speaks, speaks first, first loses. loses. And you don't, you don't say a word, but what I like, I like to do is pull out their wind sheet, and I like to start making, making some report marks, marks and some filling in some information like the upline and, and things, and things like, that like that on their wind sheet, and I'll just, and I'll just there sit there and quietly write on that while I wait for them to go to the board or to go to the board or to go to the board. Guys, we do another great training called Closing and Handling of Objections that really mirrors this becoming a master presenter. We'll do that for you here very soon and marry these two together. We have some great Closing and Handling Objections training on the power series. Series as, well, as well, okay? okay? The, final the final thing I want to say, we're running a little long on time here, is this is well worth the investment for all, for all of us here tonight. tonight. And, that and that is learning to start people correctly. There's, There's an old saying that if you start them right, right, they will finish, finish right. right. Uh, uh, so it is very, very important. Very important. Number, Number one, uh, and I'm just going to hit three very, very important points on starting people correctly. Number one, folks, the ability as a leader to be putting product in the hands of your brand new people. What I like to put is two bags of chocolate, one bag of electrodes, one bag of pure. 
Now, now folks, folks uh, you, know, you know, again, I don't, I don't give, give the chocolate, chocolate away, okay? okay? They, can they can buy it from, buy it from me. me. I say, listen, I say, listen we, need we need to get this thing started, started for you. You've got samples, samples that you're going to want to be giving out. out. Yeah, give me four bucks, that's the whole sale price. price. I'll, I'll pay the shipping. shipping. Here's your first two bags of chocolate because I can't afford for you to wait. And I need you, by the way, to be a product of the product as is discussed in the win steps, okay? Next, I'm going to put third-party credibility and sort of brochures in your hand. I don't, I don't want them, want them to, uh, to, walk to walk out of there with nothing, nothing guys. guys. I want them, I want them to leave product, product and, also and also want them to leave some literature. The final, the final thing is I want to cover, cover the wind sheet with, with them right there. Right there. there. We're going to cover, cover the three steps. We're going to cover the three questions. questions. Guys, we're going to cover, cover the invitation script. script. We're going to cover it all right there. Right there. Okay. Because it's important, guys. I mean, depending upon, you know, again, I mean, you know, it's not just about, just about I don't sign people up just to sign up. That's like making a sale. I don't want to be in sales. I want to have residual income. I want to have mailbox. I mean, it comes in over and over again. I want to put 50, 80, 100 people in our business, you know, every single hour. You know what I'm saying? The only way that's going to happen is when you have an army of presenters that are out there and an army of presentations that are going on every single day. So I want to take that wind sheet. I want to make it come alive. Now, guys, now, I don't, guys, have, I don't have time for that training. It's on the Power, power Series. But I'm telling, but I'm telling you guys, you've got, got to start your people, your people correctly. correctly. You've got to win them, them over. Most, Most people, people make the mistake, mistake and they think that the presentation is done. Right? right? As, as soon as, as uh, uh, or or they, they, they think the work is done as soon as the sign-up is done. And that's absolutely incorrect, guys. The work. I'm going to tell you right, right now, the work, the work uh, is, is beginning when you sign up. That's, that's when the work, when the work is really started, started okay? okay? Because, because now, now you've got, you got me in the business. Now, now it's time to get me moving forward. What we call, call EMP stands, stands for Plugged plug in, in and Anticipating, participating, okay? okay? So I've got so to have, have a product, product in my hand, hand so I can be a product of the product, folks. I mean, we've got people who get our thermo, and literally they lose five pounds in two days. Well, hello, hello, don't, don't you think, you think they're hooked on the chocolate at that, that point, right? right? Well, they, well, they, they, they get the purest, they come off of the coffee and energy drinks, 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 or they get the candle, they got pain that goes away, they get the banana, they start losing weight. Whatever, whatever they it may be, you get a product in their, in their hand right away. Now, guys, as far as that concludes tonight's Becoming a Master Presenter training, I want to touch on very quickly. Uh, the, uh, new the new presentation, most of you know, we just launched, launched a brand new presentation. Now, anytime, now, anytime we, launch we launch a brand new presentation, new presentation guys, you know, you know, designing, you know, just so you know, so you, know, so you know, design a presentation, uh, you, know, you, you know, design, design what you feel is about 5% of that presentation, that presentation to be absolutely locked in, okay? okay? But there's, but there's 5% of the presentation, the presentation that until you had yourself and your key leaders that have done some dry runs with that presentation, you're still not going to absolutely have it perfect. So we got this presentation up on the website. Right now, guys, we are, as we as told, we told a, a, bunch a bunch of leaders in Lima earlier today, today. Uh, we, are uh, we are reserving the right Friday, Friday to, make to make some tweaks and modifications, so I can encourage you to hold, to hold off on being a large, large quantity, quantity printing, printing of the presentation. presentation. If, you could, if you can use digital, digital right now for the next uh, 40 hours, uh, after, uh, after Friday, Friday, guys, guys the presentation will be absolutely rock solid final. It will not change for, oh man, last presentation didn't change for a year. So it's not going to change, guys, it'll be locked in. And, uh, and, uh, and solid. Uh, but uh, but I'll tell you about, about our new presentation compared, compared to the presentation that was used in 2013. Uh, it's, uh, it's much more customer friendly. friendly. It's, a, it's a very easy presentation. presentation. I mean, easy to show. It's actually, actually on video. video. It's going to be broken down, down into two parts. A quick 10-minute product portion and then about a 15-minute business portion. So from that perspective, it's very easy. You are going to of it, of it if you, if you haven't heard, heard uh, that, presentation, uh, that presentation uh, uh, done, uh, done just yet. As a matter of fact, let me just verify something, something here. I believe, and I just want to verify, verify my notes, 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 notes here. I believe, and yes, that, yes, that is correct. That that I am actually tomorrow night, tomorrow night uh, with, with our, our very, very own Gold Executive, executive out of Waco, Waco Texas, Texas, the absolutely fabulous singular. Lisa and I will be doing our presentation tomorrow night. Lisa, Thomas, we call them TLC, that stands for Thomas and Lisa's Chocolate. 
these guys are incredible. incredible. And Mark, 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 this is the background guys, just so you know, so you know accounting. accounting. Uh, and also, also a small business owner. I heard uh, Thomas, Thomas came to this company, company folks, folks and absolutely lit it up. Uh, uh, they did not work hard before they were making any money. money. They came to 360 to they exploded their business in the very first week they were involved. And they never looked back. They now have an organization that spans the world. They're doing an absolutely incredible job for us. So just so you know, Lisa and I will be doing that presentation with the webinar tomorrow night. I do encourage you uh, to be, uh, to be there on there and try to watch that, that if you can. can. We'll probably record that, that as well. So you so can, you can have, have a, uh, you know, kind of hear, if you will, how this presentation, this presentation goes out. But, uh, but guys, guys, listen, here's, here's what I know, know and, this and this is my wish, wish for you. My wish for you is to become a master presenter. And the, and the reason for it, folks, is because I want, I want you to learn to create, to create the unfair advantage, advantage in your business and network marketing. So many people in this industry, they never, they never learn. learn. They, can they can be in for 20 years, years and they, they never, never learn tonight. tonight. They never, they never learn, learn how, how to become a master presenter. presenter. Uh, the reason, uh, the reason you, want you want to become a master presenter, presenter folks, is because you want to be the master uh, over, over your faith, okay? And, and when I say faith, I mean, faith, I mean your success, success level, okay? Success, success is a choice here, guys. It doesn't, it doesn't just happen. It's not an accidental thing. It's creating it, and it's learning the skill sets that need to be done. It doesn't mean you have to have these day one, but it's we learn, you know, we're to get on a call for an hour and 20 minutes and get trained to get mentored and learn to sweat small skills. Stuff, guys, so you too can become a master presenter, and that again is my wish for you tonight. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, have an absolutely incredible evening. We appreciate you guys being with us tonight. Uh, we'll definitely get this posted as quickly as possible so we have a nice uh, audio version for you, and uh, we'll uh, have that archive cleaned up up on the biz site as soon as possible. So, with that being said, have a great evening, and we'll hear you on the conference call. Join us tomorrow night with your guys. It's going to be absolutely awesome, and we look forward to hearing you tomorrow. Talk to you then. Bye-bye now.